Hello everyone, welcome back to Piedra Designs. This week I've got a chunk of wood that my son brought back for me from Northwest Arkansas. He had made a trip out there to see his aunt and uncle and cousins and this tree had come down on their property some time ago, maybe before they even had the property. They were reasonably certain it's a piece of walnut but the end cuts on all the limb spots here are, are so weathered that I can't be sure of that at this point. But regardless of what type of wood it is, there are at least 15 protrusions here of branches that are bigger than an inch in diameter. So there should be some amazing figure inside that piece uh, whether it's walnut or not i think what i'm going to do is take it outside and get the chainsaw and i'm going to cut this piece off here and probably this piece off here and then try to have it and have it this way and hopefully get four bowl blanks out of it plus two smaller blanks for something uh, there is a little bit of rot going on in this area so we might not get four blanks out of it uh, it's just going to depend on how bad those rotten spots are but anyways i'm going to get it outside and get the chainsaw after it and Hopefully I can come up with a blank and we'll see you back here in a little bit. All right, so we're back from the chainsaw work and now I am reasonably certain this is not walnut. It actually looks a whole lot more like it's possibly Osage Orange. Now I have never worked Osage Orange, either turning or in flat work. I do have a piece of it here in the shop, a uh, flat board my dad had bought for me, and I just haven't messed with it yet. But this looks very, very, very similar to what that board looks like. And I can tell you the chainsaw did not like cutting this, that's for sure. So I'm reasonably certain we've got a piece of Osage Orange here. I've got it mounted up on the woodworm screw, and... I think for this bowl, what I'm going to try to do is get just a simple round bowl out of it. I should be able to come out with somewhere close to a 7 inch diameter bowl, but we're going to lose a lot of this stuff first. But the first thing I've got to do is I've got to get a flat spot here on the bottom uh, to even be able to bring up the tail stock for support. Um, where where my tail stock where the live center actually wants to hit right now is right here and so i'm going to try to flatten this off a little bit right here so i can bring that tail stock up and get a little support in there while we try to get this rounded out a little bit i think we're going to shoot for an overall uh, final height somewhere around here and get out of this what's probably a bark inclusion there uh, we do have loose bark on here so I've got most of it off that would just peel off with my hands but there's still some in here so we might have some pieces of that flying but anyways enough rambling let's get to turning gonna be able to start off at a whopping 390 RPM. Need to get this tool rest a little higher. Thank you. 
I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera or not or if the camera is even in the right spot but this little mark right here where the live center touched I can see that as plain as day as this thing is spinning so once I get cut past so that I no longer see that I'll know I've at least got enough of a flat spot I can bring that tail stock up it's actually it's actually pretty cool to watch like I said I don't know if you guys can see it if the camera's in the right spot or not but I can sure see it That last cut took away the mark where the live center had come and made contact. So I'm going to take one more cut and then I'm going to bring that live center up. Alright, so we don't have much, but I can get the live center driven in to a good point there now. Yeah, it's not a lot of support, but it's better than nothing. And what we're going to do now is try to work on getting this thing a little closer to round so that hopefully we can get the speed up a little bit. Boy, we still got a long ways to go. Um, I need to sharpen up again. And then we'll see if maybe we can get the speed picked up a little bit. All right, there we got about 450. It's not a whole lot faster, but every little bit helps.
Well, leave it to me to want to do things the hard way. Took something that I didn't measure it before I started, but something that was somewhere around 13, 14 inches long at one point and try to take it down to, I figured about a seven inch diameter, I can get a clean uh, bowl blank. And as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure this is Osage orange and it's very, very hard and trying to take it down from 13, 14 inches to seven inches on the lathe. I tell you what I wouldn't give for a bandsaw to have been able to do that on the bandsaw to start with. I still haven't ever even advanced my tail stock up and I've still got quite a ways to go. So I'm going to leave the camera off for a while and we'll come back once we've finally got it round and we're doing the final cut and moving on to the sanding. We'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so we got this turned down to round. Uh, with the exception of a little spot there and a little spot there, but I'm not worried about those. By the time we make our final cut and get the top flattened off, those will probably be gone. Uh, what we do have going on is these cracks are still, we haven't got through those cracks yet. And since it's been like six days have passed since I did this, uh, we've got a few new cracks that have appeared um, as we released some tension on this from its turning so i've mixed up a little bit of wood glue and some fine dust out of the random orbit sander collection bag so i'm just going to take this and fill in all these cracks and voids with this and then we'll we'll give it i don't know an hour or two for that stuff to dry and then we'll come back and do our final cut and get on to the sanding All right, we're sanded up through 320 now. Time for the sanding sealer. This is just a store-bought shellac, cut down 50% with denatured alcohol. Give that some time to dry. I'll probably go ahead and put two coats on that. And then we'll come back when it's time for the axe abrasive paste.
All right, time to get this thing turned around and get the inside hollowed out. All right, we're down to depth, actually just a little bit deeper than I wanted to go, but we haven't made a funnel yet. I do need to go ahead and, and take this rim down and get rid of that pith. This spot chipped out and these are chipping out here. So I'm gonna take that, take the height down a little more. I need to do a little bit of scraping right in here and then I'll get get these inside cracks filled in with glue and sawdust and then I'll get it sanded up. Let me take this rim down, do a little scraping and then we'll bring you guys back once we're done with the sanding. Alright, we're sanded up through 320 on the inside. Uh, I had to re-sand the outside because uh, some of the super glue had bled through and run down and set on the outside. So I had to re-sand that. But we're ready for the sanding sealer on the inside and again on the outside where we had to sand it back so far. And we'll probably do two coats of this again and then hit it with the Axe products.
All right, I think we're ready to get it turned back around and get the tendon off the bottom. All right, I'll get this bottom sanded up and signed, and we'll come back and talk about this thing. All right, so we got her done. Here's our, what I am 99% sure is Osage Orange bowl. I'm sure enough of it that I marked the bottom of it as Osage Orange. Uh, besides being able to compare it to a known a sample that I have here in the shop. I checked on wooddatabase.com. They mentioned another test in there where you could take the shavings and put them in a cup of water and the water would turn yellow because the Osage Orange contains a water-soluble yellow dye and sure enough the water turned yellow so I felt sure enough that this was Osage Orange that I went ahead and marked the bottom. We did come out at about seven and a quarter inches in diameter. Um, it has actually uh, warped a little bit. It's seven and a quarter uh, side to side. It's seven and three eighths um, along the main end grain portion. And it's three inches tall. As far as using the wood glue and the, the sanding dust to fill in the cracks, I'm not real happy with how that came out. It still just looks like it's wood glue. Uh, so when I filled the inside, I used um, CA glue, and just some shavings from around the lathe to fill that stuff in on the inside. And I'm not particularly happy with that either. What I should have done is uh, filled those cracks with some turquoise or, or something like that just to highlight them a little more. So I won't be, I won't be using the wood glue and sanding dust on future projects. Anyway, that's the video for this week. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. From Piedra Designs, thanks for watching.